Hey and welcome to Slicer Alpha 1.42 preview. In this video I want to give you an overview of all the things we've been working on, such as cutting directly in the 3D view, adding and manipulating custom supports in a, you know, a lot more natural way. We now also have the scene hierarchy window. It's now possible to add color changes directly in Slicer. And you can even visualize the color changes so that you know you set them right. And also the print time estimation is now displayed immediately after slicing. You no longer have to export the G-code. And there's even SLA support. So you know there's just a lot of things to cover. So let's go over them one by one and talk over the changes. Our slicer team has been really busy. It's crazy how much work they, they, they've done on Slicer before Christmas. So you can immediately tell that the UI is different. So instead of the old top menu, we now have these icons. But you still get all the tools you're used to, you know, so you can arrange, you can add or remove instances. You still have variable layer height. But the tools in this left panel move, scale and rotate, now have proper 3D gizmo and you know if you highlight one of the axes it will hide all the other axes and if you for example choose to rotate the model around the z-axis you can rotate it both freely or if you hover over the white lines you can go in discrete steps of 5 degrees. Uh, place on face still you know, that's working great since day one, so that is still the same. But the cut that I already briefly mentioned uh, is now done directly in the 3D view. So if you remember previously when you select cut, it opened this new window and it was a little bit awkward to work with. So all actions are now done directly in this main 3D view. So if I select cut, it will open this new dialog and I can just drag the plane around or I can enter a precise height in this text box. So that is now, you know, a lot easier to use compared to the old version. You may have also noticed that uh, here on the right I get the object manipulation. So, you know, sometimes it's easier to just uh, transform the object with these tools but sometimes you know for example you know, rotate can be much faster just by entering it in this text box so you now have the option to do it whichever way you prefer. The custom supports are now much easier to use so if I add support enforcer this box will appear and I can just drag it with the left mouse button I can change the scale either globally or I can just pick one axis, so for example the z-axis, if I wanted to support the lion's chin. I can simply delete it with the delete key. And in the same way I can add support blocker or even modifier mesh to, I don't know, for example, use different infill for the head of the lion. If you right click the model you can now also change the settings for this model. So if I choose for example infill and you know, I would take fill density and fill pattern, it's going to appear here on the panel on the right and you know I can now change the density to I don't know 30% and the pattern to cubic and this will only affect this model and its instances. So if I were to import a different model, uh, it would use the global settings and global infill pattern. And that, uh, that brings us to this scene hierarchy window. So this is also completely new. And it just gives you a very nice overview of all the models you have in your scenes and the various instances and changes you've made to the models. Now, if the model is broken in some way and there's an error 
This exclamation mark will appear next to its name and on Windows you can just right click it and it will repair the model through NetFab. But this is only possible on Windows because it has the NetFab API. On other operating systems most likely we're just gonna redirect you uh, to NetFab web page where you can upload the model and fix it in there. The top menu is also uh, reworked pretty much, so you now have your file safe as in any other program that you're used to. And if you if you choose it, file safe, it will save the whole scene, all the models on the plate, all the settings you've changed, or custom supports that you've set up, basically everything. So that if I now export G-code, and later if I if I load the save file and I export the G-code again, they will be uh, totally identical. So that is really handy. And you also have the export menu, so you can, if you for example cut the model, you can still export it as STL or as AMF. And you have the import menu where you can import configs or config bundles. In the help menu, we now have keyboard shortcuts. So if you use Slicer very often, it's worth learning these shortcuts. So you can, you know, save some time by finding the icon and clicking on it and you can simply press the R key for rotate. So that's, that's really handy. Switching to the layers view is now done by clicking this icon. And if you do so, it will immediately start slicing. First, it will do the typical slice and on the background it keeps slicing and then it will show you the print estimate, print time estimate. And you can change the preview, the, the layer display and this plus icon now adds color changes. And if you do so, maybe another one, uh, another one here. If I click slice, it changes the view to color print and it will actually show me where the color change will happen, which is really handy because previously it was sometimes uh, a bit difficult to tell, you know, is it going to happen on this layer or the one before? So now it's really clear when's the color change happening. So no more, no more mistakes there. It's also worth mentioning that background processing now works really well. So if you go into configuration, preferences, and you turn on background processing, it's going to keep slicing on the background every time you make a change, but it's pretty smart. So if you, you know, move just one model, it's not going to re-slice the whole thing. It's only going to re-slice whatever you changed. So you can see that immediately after switching to preview, I have the slicing already done. And it's still slicing on the background, so now I even get the time preview. So that's that's really handy, so consider turning that on if you like it. Now if we go into print settings, you'll see that there's some color coding happening. And actually if you open Slicer, it's going to be switched into simple mode. So all the advanced settings will be hidden. So you, you will really get uh, just the things that you're probably changing the most often, like parameters or number of top and bottom layers, or for, like, for example the infill pattern. But if you want to, you can switch it into advanced mode and new settings will simply start popping up, or even into expert mode. But you still keep the color coding, so when you're changing some settings, you get a much better idea of uh, how much you should be sure about what you're doing. You know, if you're changing something with a red color code, uh, it's something that we don't think you should really change all that often. And this really just makes it easier for you to orient in the menus. And by the way, it works uh, in, not only in print settings, but in filament settings and printer settings as well. Uh, as we're getting close to shipping the first units of our original Prusa SL1, we now have SLA support uh, directly in Slicer. So you simply switch 
the printer from the Mark III or Mark II or whatever you're using to SL1. And basically the UI will change a little bit. So now you will get an extra option of generating SLA support points. But let's actually delete this model and import it again. So you see that it's huge. I'm just going to scale it down. And if I right click on the model, I get the option to optimize orientation. So that will basically calculate the optimal position for printing with SLA printers. And now if I pick the tree support option, uh, I can either uh, add them manually or generate them automatically. But actually, if you go into the layers preview, it will do all of that for you. So it's just going to automatically uh, compute the supports and slice them. But otherwise, this works just like normal slicer. So all the tools you're used to work totally the same. So that's just one less thing to learn. You don't need to learn a new slicer for the SLA. There are some other various improvements here and there. For example, if we go into window menu, we now have a window that will display the queue for uploading to Octoprint. So, you know, that's handy if you're using Octoprint. Uh, you will simply see uh, the queue of the files that are still waiting to be uploaded to your Raspberry Pi. I'm trying to think of all the things I forgot about, there's just so many changes, it's a little bit hard to keep track of all of them. If you want to try this version for yourself, you can download this alpha version on GitHub. But please keep in mind that this is indeed an alpha version, so it's possible that some things might not be working 100% reliably all the time. So if you encounter any problem, uh, either report a, an issue on GitHub or let us know on our forum. But I think I think that's it. Hope I've covered everything. Uh, see you next time and happy printing.